Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel where I share ideas and uh, things that I have learned along the way by sometimes watching others. But today I want to show you how to make uh, an emerging bowl so you can get a good one the very first time. I watched a number of videos and uh, learned the process, but some of the critical things they didn't explain. So I'm going to do that in this video. So hope you'll stay with me and watch it as I go along. <coughs> of course, you know what an emerging bowl is. It's uh, where half of the bowl is in the block and half of it's out of the block. And uh, whenever you make one of these, you've got to make two of them. So you always have two, unless you, well, if you goof up on the first one that you're making, you have a spare to make the second one. But with the process I'm going to show you, I hope you won't have, you'll end up with two and not just one or none. So <clears throat> you need a, a fairly large piece of wood because these are going to be laid, uh, of course, in this manner. So it's a, you got to have two big enough to make two. <clears throat> so I was looking around for a piece of timber. Quite often they make them out of like a log or something, but I didn't have anything dry. So I thought, well, if you got two, why not take a plank like, you know, a thicker piece of wood that would be ideal for one, and then just glue them together because you're going to split them apart after anyway. And then I was thinking, well, um, years ago, before you had fancy chucks and all the other things that we have now for lathe work, they uh, often used a faceplate with a piece of wood and then just glued the wood to that that you're going to turn with a piece of paper in between. So give that a try. So anyway, I come up with a couple of good sized blocks of wood here and I've already put the glue on there. And uh, here's the other one. And uh, just the paper bag is, is ideal material. And uh, so then I've got the glue on that side. Made it a little bigger here so it squishes around. And then we'll just put the other one on top. And then I'll go ahead and clamp that together. Clamp that together, let it dry up, and uh, I've got a piece that's plenty big, and uh, it might be easier to split in two because usually they use the bandsaw to split it in half, and that can wobble or wiggle a little bit, but this will give exactly uh, a nice split line there. So stay with me, and uh, we'll soon be turning. Okay, I've left that to uh, that clamped together with the paper between and uh, it's, it's dried actually. You don't have to leave it that long, but it's actually been overnight because I was doing other things. But uh, I think before you start your lathe work, it's time to do a little bit of uh, uh, layout work, you might say. Uh, so you actually know what you're, what you're going to do. Uh, with the split in here, it makes it really super nice to find uh, the center. And I highly suggest that you uh, make a circle around the end out to the outside there. And uh, then we're going to lay that down and make it into a cylinder. Now, you could leave it just a square block, but uh, uh, then you end up with a bowl coming out of a block of wood, and the block is quite massive then. But if you round it out like you would be doing, let's say, a tree limb or a tree trunk or something like that, uh, it works good. Uh, and you could, you know, if you have a, something round already, like a log or something, just go ahead and do that, uh, start there. But if you do a layup like I did here with the square, which I think is working fantastic, uh, And if you do a tree trunk or something like that with bark on it there, 
as you lay this top part down here, the one side uh, is no problem because your tool is coming and pushing the bark on. On the other side, it's ripping it off, and this was birch, and uh, it's ripped it off here. You can see that there. That, this was the first one that I did just for to figure out exactly what you, what you want to do. Now after I've got the circle done there, take some sort of 45 degree angle uh, uh, square and uh, take that, uh, bring a 45 degree across uh, the corners there and uh, I'll show you in a few minutes why, why I'm doing that. And then uh, also uh, continue the lines uh, down the side there. And I'll give you a close-up of the end there. Uh, it's hard to see the circle there, but uh, it's there. So we want to do that. And uh, while it's a nice flat surface, I think it'd be good to do some other layout work here too. And uh, so here you see, uh, there you see the lines going down the side there. And I've uh, drawn out the circle of where the bowl is going to be. It's going to come in somewhat from the edge and uh, then on this particular turning I don't want the outer part of the bowl to go uh, right to the end so I've left a little space there. You'll see what that's used for a little later. Just giving you some idea. And then a line uh, which is this one up here, straight across, uh, right where you drew your circle there. And uh, that'll be useful here too in a little bit. I'll show you why we're going to do that uh, as well. So that gives you an idea. The first ones I did, I just started lathing and put this line back from the sign and then I ended up with the end of the bowl way up here. And Oh, it was a terrible mess, but uh, if you lay it out uh, before you start like that, it just gives you an idea and it'll be useful a little bit later on here. Okay, so now back to these uh, these lines right here. Okay, uh, yeah, you can just put this in the lathe, mount it in the lathe and uh, and lay these corners off here, but I'm going to take the bands on. I'm going to cut these off. I made a little jig there to do that. And then when you start your lathing, you don't go clinkety clank clank and banging and ripping and tearing wood. It just lays down really super easy there. So we'll go to the bandsaw now. Okay, here's the uh, jig that I made to uh, hold the block in such a way as I can just easily slice those corners off. Now this block is fairly big, so you need a fairly good sized bandsaw. If you don't have a big enough bandsaw, then you just have to lathe it off. But uh, if you can, uh, cut the corners off. And this is useful for a lot of other projects that I do too. So, and then on the end here, I just put a, a, a screw in there. So when you set your block on there, it, uh, just push it up against the stop there. So, and uh, it gives it... It's, it's, you, we can still guide this around in case you have lead in your blade or whatever there. So I'll uh, get this started here and uh, cut one, at least one corner off there to show you. Uh, straight cut off of there, very easy to do, and uh, that's the reason for this line on here. That way you can follow it as you go go down there. Uh, and you want to make this block fairly big because once that's cut off, it uh, 
you still want enough uh, wood here that will hold it there. And you can make bigger one or smaller one depending on what you do. But I find that a very, very handy little gadget to have all around there. So I'll just continue on and uh, cut the other four corners and mount it on the lathe. Now one thing I didn't show you uh, was the uh, center drill that I use. These are used in metalwork, but I use them extensively in woodwork. You should have these in your shop. Uh, and I've uh, already done my center there right at that compass point. That's one reason to have the compass point. Done it on both sides there. Uh, now it's ready to uh, mount between centers on a spur. Okay, <clears throat> we can see uh, I've cut the corners off, so it's going to be easy to lay down into a cylinder. And uh, we can still see where our bowl is going to be situated on this side here. Uh, <clears throat> this line right here is the end of the block there. And this line here is going to be the end of, you're exactly halfway to where the, your bowl is going to come around and just be tangent to that line. So before I lose those lines, I'm going to uh, take a, uh, the parting tool and uh, just lay down into that and then it's going to be ready when I need it there. When you lay it down, uh, you have to be on the this part, this side of the line, and uh, same on this end, on that side of the line. Now I see I'm a little bit out there, so I'll just go ahead and, and clean that up a little bit and make it a little bit deeper. I'm a little bit short there, but you can see uh, what I'm going to do there. Okay, I've got those plenty deep now, so we're not going to lose that. So. I'm just going to lay this into a nice cylinder and on this end I'm going to uh, lay that down to put a dovetail uh, for your dovetail, ch your dovetail chuck there. That will go on this end. Right now I've just got it on a spur center. Okay, I've rounded it out here as you can see and uh, this is, uh, I've taken this down somewhat and this down somewhat here. This area here will be half the bowl, half the bowl. Now when I drew that line, the circle on the top when it was flat, if I'd taken it and drew a circle on the end, then I could see how far I need to take this down. But even if you did do that, and probably I would recommend you do that, that's a step maybe I missed, uh, when it comes right down to it, measure the distance uh, from this shoulder to the edge of this line right here and that measures uh, two and one quarter. Uh, I'd recommend when you make that first layout if you use measurements that's uh, common that you can easily divide by two. So now this uh, diameter here it's going to be the outside diameter of the bowl. If this is half the bowl, two and a quarter, then I have to take this down to four and a half. So I would have to adjust my caliper to, to four and a half. And then uh, I'll take that down to four and a half. Just go over that again. Two and a quarter on this particular one from this edge to the tip of your bowl. That's half a bowl. So, uh, which is two and a quarter in this case, and then doubling it, so this has to be taken down to four and a half. So I'll use the caliper and the parting tool and take that down to four and a half and then reduce this whole diameter down 
but this one here will be progressed well you cut that deeper all down to close to not right at center you know maybe leave an inch or so there okay so I'll just go ahead and work on that <clears throat> The first planning that you do is good. You should do it like that. But what I discovered, I was looking here when I took that down to the four and uh, what did I say, four and a quarter. There was just wasn't enough room here, I felt. So I took it down a little more. If, and, you know, you can modify as you go along. So I took that down more, brought it down so then I used, took that measurement, which I think was four and an eighth instead of four and a quarter, and uh, I put a new line out here. That's where the, the outer rim of the bowl is going to be. So now I'll take my parting tool and cut down on this line. And uh, I think that's basically what, I, what I'm going to end up with now. Okay, I've reduced this section here down to the diameter of the bowl from our measurement with the parting tool here. I've reduced the, I've taken it down on the end, which will be half the bowl here, down to as small as you think you dare here. Leave a, I'm going to leave about that much there. And now what we have to do, it's very simple. We just make this into exactly a half a circle. And it's very important that you have it exactly right. So how am I going to do that? Well, it's not too good an idea just to guess at it uh, because when we flip it the other way, we're going to be, it, if it's not accurate, then you're, when you dish out the bowl, it's not going to match the rim and it's going to be thin, thin and thick. So we're going to make a template. So now that I know the measurement here, which in this case is four and a uh, eighth, half of that is two and a sixteenth. So I'm going to take my compass and a little piece of uh, wood and very accurately cut out uh, a pattern. So as I lay this down, I can keep checking and matching it so it's, it comes out right. Okay, here's my uh, layout of my uh, pattern exactly a half circle of the right diameter and here's this little part here which is going to fit over top of that now if, if you had a if yours is really secure with the dovetail chuck you probably wouldn't need that at all but uh, I'm using it because uh, this piece of wood is fairly large um, okay so I'm going to cut this out accurately and then uh, sand it right to the line so it's uh, just what you might call perfect. Okay, your question might be, well, how do you know that your template is perfect? Well, it's quite easily. When you uh, sand it down to your line, if it's perfect, you put it on your project, and if it fits on there just snugly or perfect, no gaps all the way around. That way you know that you have it perfect. Another way to check whether it's perfect or not is you take and put a line on here, one side and then the other side. And then you take your pattern and you flip it over and you put it back on the other side. And if these lines line up perfectly, then guess what? You've got a perfect pattern. Now we're going to use that this way, butting up against this surface, and we're going to lay this down so our profile here perfectly matches this here. Now I haven't cut this out yet, so I'm going to cut that out, and uh, then I'll start lathing it and uh, work it down till I can put this on. I'll show you once or twice before I get it done there. Okay, I've taken it down by eye just into a relatively nice curve there and I've got my template here and I, <clears throat> I know I have to take it down more but what I'm interested in partly 
is by putting these legs against here, I can see I have to take, use my parting tool or whatever and bring this back a little farther there. And other than that, the curve looks nice. Uh, just putting it down, down that far. Curve looks good. You just have to take this in because you want to have that perfectly line up when these legs touch that point there, right there, that point there. I'll put this in here so you can actually see it there. I was looking at it, sorry about that. But see, it, it fits there fairly good, but if I bring that up to there, there's a gap in here. So taking this down here a little bit here. Because I want these legs to touch here as well as the curve to be perfect. So just continue working on that a little bit more. Okay, by using the template, I've pretty well got it down. It's just very, very slight. I think um, just I want to sand this now and uh, I'll get that done and lay the center down here now that. Uh, I've got all the work done. This the tailstock stabilized it a whole lot, so kind of leave that to the end there, and uh, and that. So I'll, I'll sand here and sand this down. The first time I did it, I didn't sand the sides down here. I had to do that later. If you forget, you, you can do that later. But uh, yeah, okay. Well, we'll get it ready and then we'll see if we can split this in half and end up with two pieces instead of one. By using a spindle gouge, uh, you can cut this as a, on a taper and if you have it well supported in the, the dovetail chuck, uh, you can cut that right through and right off there. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just going to take that off now and uh, finish sanding this and keep checking it with the uh, pattern till I get it till it touches here and is smooth all the way around and we know we're 100 percent right for the next step okay here I have it uh, sanded down and it matches the uh, profile of the pattern and these tips here touch that part there you want to make sure that you, it's as perfect as you can get it and uh, if you didn't quite get it perfect, you can still salvage it in the end. I, the first ones I did were way off, and I was still able to make it look look okay. So, yeah, just there. Now they got the tail stock. It was easy to sand down there. I used the drill and a circular disc there to do that. And some hand sandpaper, too. So, okay, that's it. We're... All we've got to do is split this apart now and uh, do the rest of it. Well, this is my theory about splitting this apart. I'm going to split it from this end. And I needed somewhere to hold it because I didn't want to put this on the, on the table and then bang against the end here. So I made two U-shaped things that uh, will fit around there. And to do that, uh, very simply, I just took the, the profile pattern, laid it on there, and cut it out. Uh, so that would work there. So I'm just going to go ahead and experiment here and try this. And if it won't split apart, well then we would do like we know. We would have to use the bandsaw or something like that. But just let me go ahead and I'll see if I can get this. I just took a chisel and put it in where the crack is there, bang it with a hammer there. I'll just put that over there and I did it on one side and the other side and it started splitting so it wasn't as hard as what I thought there. It wasn't that easy. It was way easier than what I thought. Okay, so there's our two pieces. That was way better than trying to cut it on the bandsaw. Everybody else used bandsaws, whatever, try to cut that, but just that paper in there and then pop it, across, pop it apart worked slick as could be. So now what I'm going to do is clean some of this off here. I've got the belt sander, I can do that. But actually we wouldn't really have to. Uh, should be okay the way it is. 
because we're going to lay this off anyway. Well, I'll just see if I can clean this off just a little bit. Put that on the belt sander and it just took some of the brownness off there. And, uh, but really not necessary. Okay, the, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this dovetail right off on the saw here. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll do a little bit of layout work on here and we'll be ready for the next step.